Okay, so um, hello everyone, welcome back to another video in the Voxel Engine tutorial series. So um, this is going to be a really exciting one since the last one has been, uh, well it's been like what, almost six months since the last one, so yeah, I'm hoping that you guys are looking forward to this one. Um, of course, as you have seen in the title and description of this video, in this one we're building the chunk mesh building system as well as doing Perla noise. Now, just for the purpose of this video, um, because I didn't want to keep things too long, I decided not to actually go the entire Perla noise class um, in this video because you know, things might get a little bit longer that way. So instead, I'm going to give you the source code of the Perla noise class at the end of this video, but and then I'll just explain how it works at the later stage, maybe in a, another video, perhaps. So for this video, the main focus is just to get the chunk mesh building system going, because as I've mentioned uh, probably a few times now, is that we're going to change the engine completely. Like, everything's going to change quite drastically and it's going to start in today's video. So as you all know we've been representing blocks in this game as entities with their own textured models which is completely incorrectly and also their own rotation and position and that type of thing and we don't really want to do any of that. We don't want blocks to be represented as entities. Now the entity class is still useful for in case in the future we want maybe sheep and stuff like that rendering and maybe other moving objects, I don't know, could be anything really, but blocks should not be represented as entities. Um, it's just a stupid way of doing that because right now we're doing one draw call per block. Um, that's very inefficient. So if we go ahead and run where we left off in the last video, you'll see we've got our basic uh, chunk generation system up and running and it works well, perfectly fine. And yeah, we've done some chunks in here, but you will notice that the frame rate is extremely slow. Um, even if you like, especially if we're going to increase the size of the world, the frame rate is going to start dropping drastically and we don't really want that. So. You, you'll also notice that if you go inside of the world, you will notice that all these block faces are being um, drawn, which should obviously not be visible. So they shouldn't even be here. So we're going to change all of that in today's uh, chunk mesh building system. So let me show you guys what it looks like when we actually have that implemented. So I've got this other project here. Let me just quickly run this and show you guys what we're left with. So as you guys can see right here, I'm generating a, a 16 by 16 chunk of blocks, um, 16 by 16 by 16. And yeah, it's pretty nice. The frame rate is very smooth and everything is just going exactly according to plan. But if I actually go inside of this block, um, oh yeah, this block is um, drawn in a single draw call, by the way. So um, if I actually go inside of this, you will notice that there are no blocks on the inside of this chunk. So all the block faces that should not be seen are just not added to the chunk mesh. Um, and that's quite clever. That's the basics of how this chunk mesh building system works. Is It basically optimizes um, all the invisible block faces out of the chunk mesh so that they won't get rendered. And this is really, really what speeds this up so much, is this ability to you know, rendering a single chunk as a sing in a single draw call without all the unnecessary faces being drawn. Now let me show you guys what this will look like as soon as we add the pearl noise at the end of the video and also um, generate an actual terrain with this. So let me just comment out the other stupid code here. And uncomment this. And comment this out as well. Then if we go ahead and run this, you will see that we are now generating a terrain with Perla noise. So th this takes a bit, th this takes quite a while to generate the first time, but once it's generated, everything will go back to being smooth again. We will have a smooth experience. And well, yeah, there you go. We can see that we're finished generating. And the frame rate is really, really nice. Now my screen recorder does have a bit of an impact on it. I can also see like my mouse is, for instance, flickering whenever I'm recording now. Um, I'm not sure why this is happening. Um, it has never happened before, but well, 
I am not sure what's going on, but you can see that the, the terrain is generating very, very nicely. Um, and this is also using pearl noise, as you might have noticed from the random heights on the terrain. And what's especially cool about this is we can actually go inside of a layer of blocks here. So if we go inside of this layer, you will see that it's actually hollow on the inside. There are no unnecessary block faces being drawn here which is really, really nice. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I know what you guys are all thinking, and probably like, please just shut up and start coding. Well, that's what we're about to do right now. So let's go to the, wow, my mouse is really flickering a lot today. It's interesting. Um, anyway, let's get this thing implemented. So I'm gonna close that. Let's see where we left off the last time. Well, wrong project. So um, this is where we left off the last time um, with this flat terrain being generated with chunks and everything, um, with all the block faces on the inside, of course, being visible, which is exactly what we're going to want to get rid of. And we also want to generate every chunk as a single um, piece of mesh. So let me explain to you guys quickly how this chunk mesh building thing works. So let me open up my beautiful paint drawings here. So in order to get the chunk mesh building system to work is we simply, it is, it's really simple. We simply loop through all the blocks in the chunk and then we simply just take all the vertices from the blocks in the chunk and we add it to a single piece of mesh. But there's a neat little optimization that we also do. So let's for instance imagine that we have a Two a chunk with two blocks in it. So we have these two blocks in a chunk. Now you will notice that in the inside of the chunk the inside is obviously completely hollow and the way I managed to do that is by simply checking which voxels are facing empty air and which voxels are facing another voxel basically which faces are actually next to a block. So it's really easy to do um, all we do is we simply just check, like, for instance, if we're checking this block, we'll check the top face, and if the top face is empty, if there's nothing above it, we know that there's an empty voxel there, which means that the top, this top face should be added to the chunk mesh. Then we check the left of this block, well, if there are no voxels there, like there aren't, then we know that this face is going to be visible, so we add it to the chunk mesh. And then we also check the bottom face. So we see that there are no voxels here, which means that the bottom face is going to be visible, so it should be added to the chunk mesh. Then we also check the right face, but if we see a voxel there, then we know that this right face is not going to be visible, so this face there should not be added to the chunk mesh. And if we simply do that for every side of every block in a chunk, we will basically end up with a system that allows us to um, have a single piece of mesh, which does not draw the unseen blocks on the inside as well. So that's a very neat optimization. But in order to do that, we're going to have to make some modifications to the way in which we're representing blocks. So just for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to get rid of um, our dirt grass, well, of our grass texture. I'm going to just make it the dirt text, right? So dirt text, I so just change the texture there in the model texture thing. Change it to the dirt te texture so that we only load up dirt blocks instead of uh, the grass blocks like this. Now of course the model will also have to be changed to the cube model instead of the atlas cube model. And they will just have to import this cube model into Eclipse as well. So once that's all done you will see that we're left with only dead blocks. Which is really nice. So now we can continue to the next part of this video, the chunk mesh building system. So let's get right to it. So the first thing you want to do is go into the cube model class and well, right now we're generating like we're representing a cube as just a single set of vertices and this is not exactly what we want to do. So what we want to have is um, we want to have every face, be able to access every f each face of the cube individually. So the way we do that, we just create a public static uh, vector 3f which is going to be for every single face. We're going to have basically an array of vectors for every face. And the first one is going to be called PX, the positive in X face. So the face with all the X coordinates positive, basically. And this is going to be equal to this array. 
Now we just need to import the vector 3f class into Eclipse like that. Then we can say new vector 3f. Um, and we need six of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, well, this is a single face. So every each face is going to have six um, vertices, basically. And, well, you might notice that in the vertices um, float array, we only have four vertices per face. But that is because we've added these indices to tell OpenGL how to connect up these faces. For the purpose of this video, I've decided not to use indices just to make things a little bit simpler for today. At a later stage, we are eventually going to add the indices back into the cube faces because um, not having these indices really creates a quite a big problem. It actually takes up a lot of unnecessary GPU memory to represent all these um, vertices which are on exactly the same place. I'm not sure if rendering indices is actually faster than just drawing standard arrays, but I know it definitely takes up a lot less GPU memory, which is exactly what we want. But for the purpose of this video, we're not going to do that. So we need to add all of these faces into these individual uh, vector 3f uh, flat arrays. So this is a px, and I'm going to just call it underscore pos, so positions, a positive x face positions, OK? So for every single block in the world, this is going to be exactly the same. The only thing that's actually going to change per block type is the texture coordinates, but not in this video yet. So now we want to add all the positions which has um, the x coordinates as positive values. So as you can see, these first coordinates here, all the x coordinates, and they're all positive. So we know that we're looking at this face right here, which we need to put in there. So all we do is we simply just copy these coordinates in there. So the first one, second one, the third one, and the third one has to be repeated. Um, I did explain this in the second tutorial, I think it was. So just repeat that one, then we do the third one, and then the fourth one will be the first face again. Now we simply just do this for every single face of the vertices class. But luckily, I've already done this in this text file over here. So I'm just going to copy everything in this text file and then just paste this back in here. So as you can see, we've got the px positions, which is the positive x positions, the negative x positions, the positive y positions, negative y, positive z, and the negative z positions. So this is all the faces. I will provide a link into the description of this text file so that you can download this. So you don't have to retype all of this yourself because this is a pain in the ass to type. So not fun. Anyway, that's our new cube model class done right there. So in order to use that, we're going to need to make a new, uh, let's make a new package. So we'll say new package and I'm going to call this cube. Cube. Well, that's good enough. And then inside of this package, I just want to create a new class called Vertex. So everything that has to do with cubes will go into this into this cube package. So a Vertex is basically just going to be um, a set of positions, UV coordinates, and normals. Now we're not going to be using the normals yet, but we'll add it in for completeness. So we'll have a public vector 3f. Uh, positions, position, and normals. Positions, normals, and then also a public vector 2f, which is going to be the UV coordinates. So UVs. Then we just need to import these vector 3f and vector 2f classes from the utilities class of the Lightweight Java game, game library, and then we just need to create a constructor. So public vertex, and this basically just takes in a vector 3f um, positions vector 2f, which is going to be the UVs, and uh, the normals. And this dot positions this is going to be equals to the positions that we take in as parameters, yeah. So, dot uvs equals uvs, and this dot normals equals normals. 
And that is basically it for the vertex plot. So this is just going represent to represent a single vertex of a cube, for instance. Um, and this should work well. I'm getting an error there. Okay, sweet. So the vertex class is done. Now we need to move on to the other class, which is the... No, geez, we're already 15 minutes in, and we haven't made any progress. So let's now create the cube, the actual cube class, which is going to represent a single cube in the world. So we create a new class, and we're just going to call this cube. And a cube is simply going to be... Well, it's obviously going to represent a cube. And a cube is obviously going to have a set of... Uh, I don't even know. Geez. Cube is just going to have... a uh, coordinates, integer coordinates, and a type. You know, what kind of cube it is. Is it a dirt block, grass block, that type of thing. So we're going to have a public int x, y, z, which is going to be the 3D coordinates of this cube, and a uh, um, public static enum called type. Um, and this enum is just going to contain the different type of um, blocks that we get, like dirt, grass, and whatever. I'm just going to keep those in for now. And then we need a constructor, so public uh, cube. Simply going to take in the int x, int, int y, int z. And of course the type. So type, type. And then we're also going to have a public type, of course. Um, type. And that will basically be it. So this dot x. And just create the finish of the constructor over here, which is really simple. We've been doing this what 200 times now. And then of course the type also has to be equal to the well the type in the constructor. This dot type is equal to the type that we carry in from the constructor. Simple. So this is basically it for the cube class. Really basic, really simple, and beautiful. So now we can actually create the chunk class. Well, we already have a chunk class. So let's move the chunk class out of the Realmcraft package and into the cube package. Well, we can actually create a new package for this thing. So let's create a new package called chunk. Chunks. Well, and then move it in there. And let's edit this chunk class a bit. Well, this, yeah, this chunk class. So in the chunk class, we are taking in a list of entities called blocks. We don't want to take in a list of entities. We want to take a list of block. So just make all these entity, change that to blocks. Now, we're not going to take in any of these parameters here. Well, those methods, we take those out. Now we need to import the blob. Did I generally screw this up so badly? Oh wait, cube. I call this cube, not block. So I'm going to rename this class. If that's even possible. Yeah, to block. So rename the cube class to block. Yeah, let's open up this block class, make sure it works. Yeah, there we go. Set and done. So this is going to take in blocks. Now I just need to import this block thing from the cube package and this dot block equals blocks and that's really it for the block class so now we need to actually create the chunk mesh class um, so in the chunk class yeah, everything works there. Now let's create a chunk mesh class. So chunk mesh. Now this is the class that's going to build do all the chunk mesh building magic and all that kind of stuff, which is really going to be cool. 
So a chunk mesh class is simply going to have a, a list of vertices. So it's going to take in a list of vertex vertices. Um, this is going to be private, of course. And we want to import the list from java.util and the vertex from our vertex class in the cube package. So then we're also going to need a private list of a float, which is going to be the positions list. We're also going to have a private list of float, which is going to be the UVs list. And a private list of floats, which is going to be in the normals list. Okay, then we're also going to have some float array. So float array, um, positions, float array, uh, positions, uh, UVs, and the normals. And that's basically that. So now that we have all these things, we're also going to take in a chunk. So chunk. Uh, Chunk. It's going to be public, of course. Public. Um, so we'll make this public. Then we're going to have a couple of methods. So this is going to be pri public. Well, the first one's going to be public. Void update. So this is in case we want to change a chunk. So let's say we add or remove a block from a chunk, we are going to need to update this chunk to this chunk mesh to take in the new chunk. And this is simply going to do this dot chunk equals chunk. For now at least. And then well that's simply it. Then we're also going to have a private void bold mesh which is going to do all the chunk mesh building stuff and then private void populate lists which is basically going to update these float arrays and stuff according to the data in the vertices so after we've updated the chunk we're going to need to uh, um, bolt the mesh and popu populate lists. That's basically how that's going to go. So, um, really simple. We're also going to need a constructor for this class. So, uh, we say public chunk mesh. And a chunk mesh is also just going to take in a chunk called chunk. So we're simply going to say this dot chunk equals a chunk. Then we're also going to need to populate the array list. So vertices, vertices equals new array list of vertex um, positions list equals new. List float and UVs list equals list of float once again. That's basically that. Then we just need to import array list from the java.utils class thing. And that is basically it for the chunk mesh building. Then after we've done that, we need to uh, pop we need to, I guess, update. Oh, wait, no. Just a uh, bold mesh and a populate lists. And that will basically be it. That's, yeah, that's basically that done. Um, no, I haven't done the normals list. And uh, that's basically that for this system. So now we're going to need to implement the whole chunk mesh building thing. 
which shouldn't be too difficult. Um, so with this, we're simply just going to loop through every block, check if there are surrounding blocks next to it, and you know, see which faces are visible and which are invisible. So we're going to say loop through blocks in chunk and determine which faces faces are visible. Determine. Right, and this is going to go very simply. So we're simply going to say for int i is equal to zero, i is smaller than the chunk dot get chunk dot blocks of course. Now our chunk class obviously doesn't have this should be public. Our blocks list in the chunk class should definitely be public so that we can access it in here. So dot blocks dot size i plus plus we're simply going to loop, loop through all of these blocks and determine which faces are visible and which are invisible. So, to do this, well, well let's, let's first, you know, get the block. So, I'm going to think of get block called block i is equal to chunk dot blocks dot get. Let's say i, right? So, we can just get this block out of there. Then we just need to import the block from our blocks classing. And then that's basically simple. Then we just need some boolean flags so that we can check which sides are visible and which are invisible. Sort of keep track of what sort of what we found and what we haven't. Um, which so first is of course the positive x face. So they're all going to start out to be false. Negative x is also going to be false. The positive y is false. Negative y false. Positive z false and of course the negative z is also going to be false so we need these flags to determine which blocks are sort of initially it's going to assume that we haven't found any blocks on any of these sides of the cube and then we're simply going to loop through another loop and check if they actually exist or not so int j is equal to zero j is smaller than chunk dot blocks dot size j plus plus then we're also going to make another block block j is equal to chunk dot blocks dot get j so that will get these blocks individually so that we can have them as variables instead of you know calling this whole line every time we want to just retrieve a, retrieve a simple block. That's just going to make everything much simpler. So now we need to check each side of every block to see if those they exist the blocks or not. So let's start with a px. So let's start off with positive x face. So to do this, we're going to say if. So uh, we simply check um, well if the block i dot x plus 1 because we're checking the positive x side so we say I have to say i plus 1 and this has to be surrounded in brackets of course if this is equal to a block that already has that same x position as the current x plus 1 because it's the positive in x position that we're trying to compare here so if that is equal to block j dot x and the y's and z's also match up then we know that what we're dealing with here okay so equal uh, just do this first that will just you know so I don't run into these bracket issues like I always do then we also have to compare the y's and the z's, the, the y and z values of these blocks. So we say block i dot y plus block j dot y 
block i dot z as also equal block j dot z okay and when all of those things when we found a match there we're simply going to say that px is equal to true because when this is the case then it means that we have found a block which has the current block we're looking for, the block in the i loop with an x value which is one more than the current block's x value so we know there's a block to the right of this block then in that case so now I just want to copy this one a few times one, two, three, four, five, and six. We want to copy this six times over. So we first check the positive x side, then we need to check the negative x, and this is simply, we just change this positive sign to a negative right there. I want to remember to change this px to an nx. Then we need to do the positive y. So this is also really simple, just py. Then we need to remove this plus one over there and remember to add the block i.y and then just add the plus one over there that should fix that then we also have the negative y so ny remove the plus one there add the plus one next to the y well this is of course negative y so we need to keep this negative of course then we have the z value so we check for positive in z we of course remove this plus one there, we add the plus one after the z value of the i block and then we need to remember to make this an ny there and this say pz right there and then this is um, negative z and nz so now we've done negative y, positive z and negative z which we haven't added yet so we just say z minus one and we need to remove this plus one over there. And that should really be it. This should tell us which this should tell us if there are blocks to the sides, sort of surrounding blocks to our current loop block we're looking at. So if we have a chunk full of blocks, it's gonna this loop is basically gonna loop through every single block and it's gonna check which block says um, five block faces next surrounding the blocks. And it's gonna tell us which block faces of every single block is surrounded by a cube. And then these flags are going to return those values, which is really, really useful because this will allow us now to actually determine which phases we should add to the chunk mesh. So now that we've done all this, we can simply start building the chunk mesh. So build add, vis well, add visible faces to the chunk mesh. And it's really as simple as this. So this should tell us which faces are visible so that we can add them to the chunk mesh. And a chunk mesh, of course, has this list of vertices. So we're just going to need to add vertices. It's as simple as this. All right, so now we just need to add these faces to the chunk mesh. So we're going to check which faces were visible and which were not. So if not px, which means that if we did not find a block in the positive x value of our i block then it means that there are no faces blocks to the positive x side of the current block which means that its x face is going to be visible which means that we need to add it to the chunk mesh and here's how we do that we say vertices dot add then we simply add a new vertex there And a vertex, of course, has a position, a UV, and a normal value to it. So this is how that's going to go. Um, so we have the position, so which is a new vector 3F. And we also need to remember to add the positions of the sort of the block offsets in the chunk because we don't want to draw all the blocks vertices on exactly the same place. So we need to remember the offsets of the blocks x and y and z values. Otherwise, well, I did that the first time and actually forgot to add the offsets and, well, I tried to draw an entire chunk and instead I just got a single block drawing. Well, a couple of blocks but just drawn on exactly the same place. We don't want to make that mistake again. So for this, we're basically just going to say block I. Actually, just see exactly how I did it here. 
Yeah, so I use the cube model engine, just added the offset of the block. So really simple. So we get the coordinates from the cube model class dot px, of course, because we're currently in the px value. So px pos, and then we have to put a k in there. Now, you need to remember that there are six vertices. So what we can actually do is we can cut this line of code. We can create a for loop. Because we don't want to retype that six times, so we just create a loop for us. That will loop six times to do all this math for us. So this is where we're currently at. We want to get the position dot k dot x, and we want to add block i's x value to that. Then we need to work with the y value. So we say cube model dot well. dot px pos of course then the k dot y we simply add block i dot y to this and then of course the z values as well so cube model dot px k dot z plus block i dot z and that is basically what we're left with so now we just need to add, remember to add the uv and the normal values luckily this is simple because in the cube model class for now I've kept all the v uv's really standard so I'm just going to say uv k and exactly the same thing with the normal. So cube model dot normals and just put k in there, the kth element of this in there. And then we just need to add the semicolon at the end. And that is that done. What a long line of code. So we need to import this vector 3f class. And that's done. That's basically it. It's not that we've done px, we need to do the other faces as well. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, like this is going to go simple because we just need to make changes to nx, by, ny, bz, and negative z. So now that we've add those, we also need to remember to make this, well, that's px, nx, so this also has to be um, nx, of course. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, so nx, then py. PY, PY, NY, 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 and then positive Z, positive Z, another positive Z. We're basically almost finished now, so uh, I'm quite excited when I'll see this thing working. Of course, I've probably made a mistake, but we'll fix that when it comes to that. Right, and that is the trunk mesh building system basically done. This is it implemented. The only thing we need to do is we need to populate these array lists. So let's do that real quick. This is this should be simple at least. So we simply say position well positions list dot add. Now we simply just need to add the float. So we're going to say um, vertices, vertices dot dot uh, wait, we need to do this for every single um, let's cut this, so we'll say for int i is equal to vertices dot size so for each vertice, we're going to populate the array lists of the UVs, positions, and normals, and 
Well, basically add them to the float arrays, and that will be done. So we say positions list. Oh, we have already got a couple. Vertices dot get i dot positions dot x. You know, simply do this three times. First do the x, then the y, then the z. Now there is probably a quick, a better way to convert these array lists of floats to standard float arrays. I don't know if there are it is a simpler way of doing this. I really hope there are. UVs list dot add server the C's dot get I dot UVs dot X So you simply add the positions, the UVs and now the normals, so the normals list list dot add vertices dot get i dot why am I adding the vertices especially the normals dot no it is the vertices what am I doing normals is part of the vertices So the X, then the Y and the Z, Y and the Z. And that will basically be done. Now we've got all the vertices and the positions, normals and UVs of the vertices into these float arrays, array lists. Now we just need to convert these float array lists to these float arrays so that we can actually use them and load them into VAOs and stuff. So we need to say positions um, equals new float array um, positions list dot size then the UVs equals new float array UVs list dot size and same with the normals New float array normals list dot size. And that's basically it, guys. That's pretty much all we have to do, except for actually populating this array. So smaller than Now just do this for all these arrays, positions, now I just need to make this the UVs list. And this is the UVs. This is a normals list. This is a normals list. And this will be the normals array. And that is basically it. That's how we populate this array so that we can actually load these values up into the VAO so that they can be rendered onto the screen, which is quite fantastic. I think. Now, well, that's the Chunk Mesh building system completely entirely done. That's our Chunk Mesh class basically finished. So now we just need to find out, now we just need to actually, well, test it out, I guess. Yeah, well, that's going to be interesting. This has to be public. So go into the Chunk class, make sure that your origin and your blocks array lists are both public. Otherwise, they're not going to be visible from outside of these classes. We're just going to be quite a nasty mess. So now to actually test this and see if it actually 
worked a little so I've comment out this thread, this new thread that we created in the main game loop. So we're back in the main game loop now. We're gonna comment out our thread that we created over there. We're gonna create some um, blocks and render them and see if they work. Now go to the while loop, the main game loop basically. So I'm just gonna comment here main game loop. So comment out the for loop that we've got going on here. Um, because we're first going to test a few things out, see if this works. So now let's see if our chunk mesh building system works. So let's create another 10 by 10 by 10 chunk of blocks and see if they actually work the way we want them to. So x equals no, and it's from the 10, x plus plus, same with the y. Okay, so now we just need to create new blocks, so new, oh, we need to create an array of blocks first, so let's say list of block, blocks equals new array list, because we first want a list of blocks so that we can populate this list, now we also need to import the block class from our block class basically. Then we do so blocks dot add and well yeah and now we can finally add blocks to this thing. Add. Okay so we say new block. Now block simply has an x, y, and z position so that's just the x, y, and z values that we're taking there and of course the type. So we say block dot type dot let's make it well any type do it for instance. Right now the type is not going to have any effect on the block whatsoever, however we are going to use the type in a later video to when we do the texture atlas and stuff um, eventually. So mm, I think this is going to work pretty well. So now we need to create a chunk. So let's create a chunk called uh, chunk called chunk of course. Goes near chunk and the chunk simply takes in the origin position and the actual list of blocks. So this takes in the list of blocks, which is blocks, and the origin is just going to be a new vector 3f with everything zeroed basically. Then we integrate a piece of chunk mesh from this baby. So chunk mesh equals new chunk. Well. So we create a new piece of chunk mesh and we call this mesh for simplicity. We're gonna need to import the chunk mesh class from well the chunks package. And the chunk mesh is simply gonna take in the chunk. That's really it. So really simple. Very nice little API for making a chunk mesh building system. Really, really simple. Now at the moment our rendering class and everything doesn't entirely support this model, so we're going to need to make some changes there as well. So quickly go to the, uh, let's see, the render engine. Uh, wait, I'm in the wrong project there. So we need to go into the render, render engine, then we need to go into the loader class, and we need to copy our load to VAO method and paste it again. But this time we just need to remove the indices from the list of parameters and remove this bind indices buffer line of code. Then we're also going to, need, going to need to change this return value from returning a raw model with a VAO, di, VAO ID and the indices.length to returning the vertices.length, so the length of the vertices arrays. And then we're going to have to make one more change and that will be in the entity renderer class and all we're going to need to change there is, is instead of drawing elements we're going to be drawing arrays. So change this gl draw elements line to gl 11gl draw arrays because you know well the mode is of course gl 11gl triangles 
And the first will be zero because we don't want to start rendering at an offset and the count will be the model dot get model dot get vertex count. And that's as simple as that. So the reason why we're drawing arrays now instead of elements is because, like I said in the beginning of this video, we're not going to be rendering indices anymore. We are rendering without indices. So that's why we had to make that change. And what we can do now is we can create a raw model from this chunk. Uh, model is already used, so we'll use model123 equals loader dot load to VAO and we're gonna use the method with the vertices and the UVs. So this will be the mesh dot vertices well dot positions I mean and mesh dot UVs. Now integrate the textured model from this model. And this is simply going to take in the model and the texture. So we say model123 as a parameter. And the textured model is just going to be the texture that for the texture parameter. And that will basically be it. Now we need to create a new entity because our entity renderer only takes in entities for the moment. We are going to make a chunk renderer class separately from the entity renderer because the entity renderer is really inefficient um, for rendering blocks. So we're going to have to make a new method for that as well so that we can do things a little bit faster. Um, entity, excuse entity equals new entity. And the entity, of course, takes in the textured model and the position, rotation, and scale. So the text model. One, two, three, then the position is a vec new vector 3 if we just zero these values out and then all you do is just for the x rotation keep it a zero y rotation is also zero z rotation zero and the scale has to be one otherwise that's not going to work so that's basically it once that's done we can just go ahead over here right before you say render dot render we can say renderer dot add entity and we simply add the entity there. Now let's see if this works. So run that and as you can see we've got our chunk, our 10 by 10 chunk rendered onto the screen and if we go inside of this chunk it is hollow on the inside. So our chunk mesh building system works and this is drawn in a single draw call as you can see. Okay so now for the final parts to complete this. Is of course we need to now do the Perlin noise and get this chunk generation to work with multi-threading as well. So let's generate a proper chunks pack. So to do this, just simply uncomment your thread, the thread that we uncommented here. Um, I'm gonna comment this back. Then Let's go to the top here. Instead of, you know, this list of chunks, it shouldn't take in the chunk lot, it should take in chunk mesh. So, yeah, so we need to make this chunk mesh. But then we just need to imp... Oh, no, it is already... It's already imported, so we don't need to worry about that. Then we also need to create a list of entities. So, static list of entity. Entities equals new array list of them. Um, now this doesn't have to be synchronized because we're not going to be using this array list in multiple threads. It's only the chunks array that has to be synchronized because it's going to be shared across multiple threads here. So don't worry about that one. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. Okay, so when we need to add a chunk here, we simply just need to uh, create an array of blocks here. So this list of blocks, which is already here, but it has to take in the block class instead of this um, 
entity. So we say block, we take in blocks of there, and then it gets really simple after that. We we say blocks.add, and instead of taking in a new entity, we're going to take in a new block, I believe. Yeah, new block. Jeez, oh, what's going on with me today? Eh? I, zero, and J. I'll, of course, need to remember that I need to check if I'm doing this even right. I, zero, and J. That is absolutely correct. So, I need to remember the comma. And uh, this, of course, takes in the type of file. So block dot type dot dot dirt. Well, let's just make it dirt for now. And that should be it for that. Then we just need to say chunk dot add, and this takes in a new chunk and a chunk takes in the list of blocks and also an origin position, as you can see there. Unfortunately. It takes in a chunk mesh instead of a chunk. So we first need to create the chunk. Okay, equals new chunk. And we need to put a list of blocks in there. Comma the chunk is of course just gonna take in the list of blocks and an origin position, which is a new vector three F. The origin position would, of course, be the x, 0, and z values. I believe that is right. Well, of course, um, it wouldn't be it's x times uh, 16 because our chunks are 16 by 16 blocks wide, so x and z times 16, and then it should be working. Um, and our chunks is just going to simply take in the chunk there, chunks.add, chunk. So integrate a chunk mesh as well. Mesh. And this is simply just going to take in the chunk there. Then we simply have to do that, and that's basically it, guys. That's the system basically implemented. Now, at the end of the thread, we obviously made, let's just uncomment this list for now. Oh, wait, let's uncomment all of this for now. And what we're going to want to do now is we're going to need a loop, well, an index. So int index is equal to zero. This is going to keep track of which chunks has been added to the VAO and which hasn't been added to the VAO. So we're going to take all of this code right here, copy that, paste it after we did the camera stuff. We're going to, well, we're going to cut it again. We're going to say if, if our index value is smaller than our the size of our chunks, so chunks.size. Um, size. Then we're going to add the chunk. So we can remove this chunk right there. Chunks dot get index. Well, we don't even need that. We just really need to say chunks.
And that should really do the job, I believe. So now we just need to add the entity to the list of entities that we have. So entities dot add, of course, entity. Um, so we just need to change this entity to actually represent the right thing here. So the position and rotation and scale of the thing has to be correct. Otherwise, well, the position has to change. And we do that with the origin position. I just checked in the other project there quick. So um, to do this, we simply say chunk dot get index dot chunk dot origin. I think that's correct. Well, seems correct. And then we can uncomment all of this again. And we can get rid of this uh, for loop over there. So the entity is simply going to go through entities dot get i. So this is going to go through entities dot size. The origin is of course just going to be the position of the entity entities dot is not get index dot position. And then we can just uncomment this line again and if we run this it should basically generate us a flat terrain. Um, oh yeah, that's because we haven't incremented the index. So what what I've actually done also is um this entities dot get here takes in the index there. It shouldn't, it's just taking i. I don't know why I've done that. That was just stupid, I guess. So now if you run this, it should hopefully work and well as like we can guess it did work. As you can see we're generating a completely flat terrain, which is hollow on the inside. As you can also see, our frame rate has sped up drastically, and that is because we're using a way more efficient way to render things now. So, yeah, that works, guys. Now, the only final thing to do is to increase the terrain size. So, instead of using 16 by 16 chunks for the worlds, we're going to be use chunk sizes of 32 by 32 blocks. So, change all these 16 to 32s, and then things should start looking a bit better, I believe. Jeez. These tiny chunk sizes. Eh. So if we go ahead and run that, then we should now get a much larger terrain rendering. So the first time it generates, it takes a while, and it's a little bit glitchy at first, but once it's generated, it's completely fine. So there you guys go. That's it for that. Now the only thing we have left to do is, of course, I promised Perla Noise Terrain Generation. So let me quickly add the Perla Noise class. So all we're going to do is, in the Toolbox package, just create a new class and call it Perla Noise Generator. That's really it. Now... In the, in the link in the description, you will find a text file to the source code of this Perlin Noise Generator class. Um, I will, I'm not going to code this class, obviously, in this video because this video is already going way over time. I'm going to cut out a lot of things, of course, but um, this video has been going on for way too long for my liking. So um, I'll explain the Perlin Noise class in a future video, definitely. So let's go back to the main game loop. Let's go to... Right before our new thread, we create a new Perlin. We create a Perlin noise generator object. So and we're just gonna call it generator equals new Perlin noise generator. one word of course and we simply just need to import this 
noise is a capital N. And then to get the random block heights, we simply just need to, instead of you know using a zero for the block height over there, we say generator dot generate height and we use the x and z values. Now this isn't exactly gonna work and well that's why I guess um, we need to cast this to an integer and then it should work. Well, not exactly. So um when we say generator dot so we say generator to generate height, then instead of passing the x and z values we say um i plus the x times thirty two and j plus z times thirty two well thirty two of course. And there we go, guys. That is basically it. That's our perla noise generator working with our terrain generation and everything. So, um, once the generation has finished, and I can actually... Okay, so the perla noise generator is giving a bit of an issue here, from what I can see, at least. As you probably may have noticed, this is incorrect. So you also need to change the strong thing to 32 there. And well guys, um, that was a simple fix, um, you know, in the chunk. I did not see this to uh, the z times 32, it was z times 16. It's supposed to z times 32. And once that's all implemented guys and done, then it should be working completely fine. If we go ahead and run this, you will see our Perlin noise terrain generation works absolutely 100% fine. So that will be it for this video guys. Thank you all very much for watching and uh, yeah, this was really really cool. Um, in the next video we are going to change things up quite a lot. Um, interesting things are going to happen then. Um, stay tuned for that one. We're going to you know, move away from the whole entity renderer and stuff like that, and the whole entities and textures models and stuff, and only focus on rendering blocks and representing all of the textures in a single texture atlas, which is going to be really awesome. So, hope you're looking forward to that one. I definitely am. So, yeah, this video is getting a little bit long. I'm going to cut out like probably all of this footage. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you all very much for watching. This has been pretty cool, and I'll see you all next time.